Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to this video titled Real World Problems Graphing and I want you to get out your math book, pencil, math journal and turn to page 137 in your math book. So we can see the goal for today is to solve real world problems involving linear graphs on a coordinate plane. So it's important to understand what it means by linear graph so you can see within linear you see a line there okay the word line so that's what we're going to be looking at today and that when we plot our points we'll connect the dots and it will create a line for our graph so let's take a look at an example of one of these types of problems on the bottom of page 137 and here's the problem Anna is driving to the Raccoon River, which sounds, I'm sure, like a lot of fun. The distance traveled is D miles after T hours. So, in other words, a certain amount of miles after a certain amount of hours is given by distance equals 40 times T. It says graph the relationship between distance and the time. Use two units on the horizontal axis to represent one hour and two units on the vertical axis to represent 20 miles. So we'll take a look at what that looks like here in just a little bit. So we can see the table, zero hours traveled, zero distance traveled as well. One hour, 40 miles, two hours, 80 miles, three hours, 120 miles, four hours, 160 miles. Now from here, we need to think through a couple questions. First of all, we got to figure out what's going to be the title of our graph, and we can see the title of the graph is Anna's Journey. We also need to be able to label the x-axis and also the y-axis. So x-axis represents the time in hours. The y-axis represents the distance. Okay, so it also said use two units on the horizontal axis to represent one hour and two units on the vertical axis to represent 20 miles. So you can see from this unit to here, so two units represents an hour. Okay, one, two units, two hours. Another two units, we go to the third hour and so on. Also, we can see we're going through intervals of 10, but we're labeling them by the 20s there. So zero to this first unit is 10 and then 20, and then the next section is 30, and then 40, and so on. So being able to label the horizontal and the vertical axis is very important. And you want to base that upon the data from your table. So you can see the data on the table back on 137, 1 hour, 40 miles, 2 hours, 80 miles, and so on. Now the question is, how far would Anna have driven in 3.5 hours. Okay, so we can see from the graph 140 miles because what do we do? We can plot our points throughout the graph. So zero hours, obviously zero miles. And we can see from the data from our table, one hour, 40 miles, two hours, 80 miles, three hours, 120, four hours, 160. And when you connect all those dots together, you can see three and a half hours right there in line with the 140 miles. Okay. And we can also see the speed at which Anna was driving, letter C. You can see that right away. One hour, 40 miles, two hours, 80 miles. You can see, take the distance divided by the time, whatever it may be. So here's the distance, 40 miles divided by one. That's going to give you 40. 80 miles divided by two hours, that'll give you 40 as well. So we can see that Anna was driving at 40 miles per hour. Based upon that information, we can also answer if she drives another hour, how far will she drive? And also we think about five hours times 40 miles, it's going to give us 200 miles total. A couple other questions. If Anna wants to drive at least 120 miles at this constant speed, how many hours will she need to drive? And it says express your answer in the form of inequality in terms of T, where T stands for the number of hours. So the number of hours is going to be greater than or equal to 3. We know 40 miles an hour for 3 hours is going to give us 120 miles there. Now, a couple other things. Name the dependent and independent variables. So we can see 
that time is the independent variable. In other words, as time moves on, it does not depend upon anything. However, the distance is the dependent variable. So as the time moves on, the distance increases. It's not as the distance increases, the time moves on. So in order for the distance to increase, the number of hours needs to increase as well. So we can see the time is the independent variable, distance is the dependent variable. It's also, understand, it's also important to understand the horizontal axis needs to have the independent variable. The vertical axis needs to have the dependent variable. So it's important to understand that. Now let's turn over to page 139 and we'll take a look at this problem together. It says a car uses one gallon of gas for every 20 miles traveled. The relationship between the amount of gas left in the gas tank x gallons we can see here and the distance traveled is y miles can be represented by the equation as y equals 240 minus 20 times x. So it says fill in the table. Graph this relationship between x and y. Use one unit on the horizontal axis to represent one gallon and one unit on the vertical axis to represent 20 miles. This is important to understand. So we can think about this equation here to fill out these different answers here. And then based upon this, we're thinking about how much gallon, um, how much gas is left here. So we have 12, then 10, and this is going to be 8. So 12, 10, 8, 6 we have there, and this is going to be 4 gallons of gas left. Now a couple things we need to figure out. What type of graph is it? So this is going to be a straight line, or we'll call it linear. graph. Remember, it's going to have a line in it there. So we can see how many gallons of gas will be left in the tank after the car has traveled 60 miles. And we need to, in order to figure this out, we got to make our graph now. So we're going to take a look at our graph here and think through a couple things. So we have a couple things here. So this is gallons of gas on the left, on my vertical axis. And then we can see miles, and it kind of ran out of room there, on my horizontal axis there. Okay, so we can see a couple things. As the distance is traveled, so the amount of gallons, we can see the distance that is being traveled here. Okay, and when we connect our line, try to do this as straight as possible. Okay, we can keep on going there. And we can answer one of our questions for letter C. How many gallons of gas will be left in the tank after the car has traveled 60 miles? So you can see 60 miles right there intersects with the 9, so 9 gallons of gas left. Num letter D, how many gallons of gas will be left in the tank after the car has traveled 100 miles? So we can see 100 miles, and we can see where that intersects right here because of our line. And that will be 7 gallons of gas left. So letter E, so I want you to write 9 for letter C, 7 for letter D, and you can see it's based upon my linear graph. And I know that's not the straightest of lines, but you can see what I'm talking about there. And it says after the car has traveled 160 miles, how much further can the car travel before it runs out of gas? So we can see after 160 miles here, there are 4 gallons of gas left. Again, one, once again, right there on my, on my linear graph, you can see where that intersects. 160 miles, 4 gallons of gas left. Then the car uses 1 gallon, we can see, for every 20 miles. Okay, so we can see it goes in increments of 20 here. In terms of 40 miles traveled, 10 gallons, 60 miles traveled, 9 gallons, 80 miles traveled, 8, and you can see that correlation there. So we can see after 160 miles, 4 gallons of gas are left, 1 
the car uses one gallon for every 20 miles. So the distance of number of gallons times the mileage, so we can see four times 20 there. So four gallons times the 20 miles would give us 80 miles there. So the car can travel another 80 miles. Okay, so we have four gallons left, four gallons left, and we take that four gallons to answer their question, multiply it by the 20 gallons. Okay, and then we have 20 miles, I should say, so 80 miles left. So now, a couple things. If the car travels more than 40 miles, how much gas is left in the tank? Express your answer in terms of inequality so we can see the answer to that. We're going to have X is less than 10 there. That's what we want to write in for the answer. And then the final question is dependent and independent variable. The dependent variable is going to be the Y axis. Independent variable is going to be the X axis here. So this concludes the video on real-world problems for graphene. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.